In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix a high hip for good. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Dr. Rowe coming to you from Spine Care in St. Joseph, Michigan. In this video, we're going to deal with a pelvic imbalance that might be causing a short leg or a high hip. And I'm going to show you how to fix this in a very easy to follow step-by-step -step guide. In the first part, let's focus on muscle weaknesses and imbalances that are commonly associated with a high hip. That is the QL or quadratus lumborum muscle, the glute buttocks, and also the adductors. In the second part, we're going to build stability by working all of those muscles together. As a note, all of these exercises can be done at home and they do not require any special equipment. So let's get started and fix that high hip right now. So the big question, how do I know if I have a high hip, a lateral pelvic tilt, or a short leg? Here's a very easy way to self-test, and it's also very good because you can do a before and after to see if this is helping to bring your pelvis and hips back into alignment. What you want to do is stand right in front of a large mirror. Take two fingers, place them right on the top of the waistline right here. You're going to press in there and find two large mounds off to the side. These are the iliac crests. So what you want to do is notice if one one side is up compared to the other. At that point, you might have a lateral pelvic tilt causing that high hip. You can confirm this by turning around and doing the same thing. Take two fingers and place it right around the belt line. You'll find two large mounds right in the lower back. And notice if one side is just tilted up just a little bit more. So do these exercises. If one side is higher and after you do them, it is starting to balance them off, you know at that point they are helping. In this part, we're going to focus on lengthening and more importantly, strengthening any muscle imbalances that can cause a high hip or a short leg. Let's start off by targeting the QL or quadratus lumborum, which runs pretty much right off to the side, right by the rib cage, all the way down into the lower back and pelvis. When this muscle becomes tight, it tends to cause a hip hike. Here's a very easy exercise to help target that muscle. It's called the QL side lift, best done on a floor. What I'm going to do is position the side that I'm having that high hip, in this case it would be my left, down towards the floor. I'm going to support my upper body weight by bending my elbow at 90 degrees and just placing it like this so it's nice and comfortable. Again, it should feel like a nice stable anchor point. You might want to put a pillow or towel underneath the arm too, just for extra comfort. Body is going to be in a complete straight line. What I'm focusing on doing is trying to lift my top hip, in this case would be my right hip, up towards the ceiling. So I put my hand right on my right hip, and I'm just going to lift my whole body as one complete unit upwards. And this can become very challenging if you have a lot of weakness going on. So go up as far as you feel comfortable. You should really focus on feeling it off to the side, into the lower back, even more so right around that hip. Once you feel those muscles get activated, try to hold this for up to five seconds. From there, you're just going to take a breather and repeat this up to 10 to 15 times. With each repetition to drive that hip up just a little bit more, always challenge yourself to activate those muscles and get a little bit stronger. And when you're done on one side, I would recommend going to the other just to keep everything in balance. So arguably the main cause of a high hip or short leg is because of glute weakness, primarily the glute medius. Here is an essential exercise that's very easy, very effective at addressing glute weakness. It's known as the glute bridge. You can do this one in bed or on the floor. What I'm going to do is start off on my back just like this. Let's have the knees bent, the feet flat during this exercise. Start off by placing your heels pretty close to your butt just like this. Movement is very easy. What I'm doing is I'm putting my hands on the side of my hips and then lifting my pelvis and hips up towards the ceiling to achieve a nice straight line from my knees to my hips to my shoulders. If you find that you don't have the strength to get into that position, just try to raise your butt up towards the ceiling as much as you can. The goal is to feel it firing into the glutes themselves. So in this position, if you feel like it's targeting more into the legs instead of the butt or the glutes, what we're going to do is change the position of our feet until we have it focused into the glutes. So slide your feet just a little bit further away from you and then repeat this exercise. When I do this, I already noticed that it is targeting the glutes just a little bit more. So really experiment with having the feet close to you and further away until you find that pinpoint spot that it is just targeting the glutes more than any other position. At that point, we want to hold this right here for about five seconds. 
From there, we're just going to relax, take a breather, and do this for 10 complete repetitions. With each repetition, drive your hips up towards the ceiling just a little bit more to challenge those muscles and hopefully uh, correct that glute imbalance. If you do have some weakness off to one side, so let's say that I have a lot, uh, I should say I have a high hip on my left side and I want to address that weakness, what I can do is take the other side's leg, in this case would be my right, and bring the knees towards me. This becomes a lot harder. I actually feel a lot going on into that glute. So to make this one more challenging and taking it to the next level, just lift the other side's leg up and repeat this exercise. And that way you can really target weakness on one particular side. You can also make this one even harder by just instead of bending the knee like this, but straightening the leg out. And I tell you what, I feel a lot firing into that left glute right now. But go through those movements and target any weakness that you might have. Next, let's focus on another big cause of a high hip, which are tight adductors. Think tightness in the inner part of the thigh and leg. This exercise is known as an adductor lift. It's best done on a floor. What I'm going to do is position whatever side that we're having our high hip, in this case will be my left side, flush against that floor. I'm going to support my upper body by bending my elbow at 90 degrees and putting my weight on my forearm. Make sure to put a pillow or towel underneath it too for extra comfort. I'm going to take my top leg, in this case my right, I'm going to bend my knee and just put my leg, I should say my foot, slightly in front of me just like this. I take my right hand, just place it on my right knee like this for a little bit more stability. The movement is very easy. Imagine your leg, your bottom leg, as a pole or a plank of wood. As a complete unit, you want to lift that leg up towards the ceiling as much as you can. When you do this, you're going to feel a lot fire in the inner part of the leg. Really focus on feeling it on the inner part of the thigh and leg. You want to hold this position for about five seconds. You can hold it for longer though if you do want to challenge yourself, but just take a breather and then on the next repetition, try to drive this up just a little bit more to get those muscles to fire. Do this for about 10 to 15 complete repetitions and I do recommend that once you're done with this to switch over to the other side throw some reps in there just to keep everything in balance in this part we're going to focus on great exercises that are going to work all of the involved muscles together to help improve pelvic posture correct imbalances and also improve stability into the lower back and the hips pelvic region this first exercise is known as a glute focused bird dog. It's wonderful. You can do it in bed or on the floor. Just start off on all fours just like this. What I'm going to do is tuck my chin towards my chest and then from there I'm going to straighten one leg away from me. Go straight at the knee, point the toes away from you, really reach out with your foot. You should already feel muscles starting to get activated into the leg, into the glute buttock and also core and lower back. Focus on feeling that. Once you do, what I'm going to do from there is just straighten my leg as much as I can and then lift the leg upwards until I really feel it firing into the core muscles, the lower back, even more so into the glute buttock. Once we hit that point, we want to hold this one for about five to 10 seconds. From there, you're just going to relax, bring the knee back down. On the second part, we're going to do an exercise called the fire hydrant and you're going to see for obvious reasons. I'm just going to raise that knee up, keep it bent at 90 degrees and I'm going to rotate my right side upwards towards the ceiling. So pretty much from my lower back all the way up towards my upper back and head right here are going to rotate upwards towards the ceiling. With this one, you're going to feel a lot fire into the hip, lower back, and across the pelvis, but really focus on feeling it into the glute. This one really works the glute medius, which is a big component of that high hip. Hold this one for five to 10 seconds. From there, you're just going to relax, take a breather, and then you're going to repeat it on the other side. You want to do this one nice and slow for about 10 to 15 complete repetitions. And with each repetition, always challenge yourself to build into it just a little bit more to hopefully activate those muscles and strengthen everything and get rid of that high hip for good. So if you stuck around to the end of the video, you're going to be rewarded with my favorite exercise that brings the hips and pelvis back into balance. I call this the dynamic hip leveler. We can do this one next to a staircase. You can also use a sturdy object like a block of wood 
a stack of old hardcover books that you don't like. In this case, I'm going to be using a yoga block. Step up with one side. Doesn't matter what side you start with because we're going to do it on both. Try to have very good upright posture, stabilize off to the side like this to help achieve that. The leg that is off, we're going to keep that one straight at the knee, so we're not trying to bend the knee. The inside of the foot is going to go flush against that object. The movement is very easy from here. What I'm going to do is put my hand on my hip just like this. We're going to lower that side is one complete unit to the point where the foot is hovering off the floor but not touching. From here what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the whole side of my body so I'm not trying to bend my knee or my hip or bend away from it like this but we're going to lift the whole side upwards towards the ceiling as much as we can. When we do this you're going to feel a ton activate into the leg, hip, pelvis, glute and also the lower back. Focus on feeling it into the glute buttock and also the hip. Once we hit that point, let's hold this for five seconds. From there, we're going to go in reverse. We're going to go slowly downwards to the point where our foot is then hovering off the floor. You want to control this movement and challenge the muscles with going up and also going down. This helps build coordination and stability, what we're looking for. You want to do this one nice and slowly for about 10 to 15 complete repetitions. With each repetition, challenge yourself. Go more slowly with it. Try to raise that hip up just a little bit more to engage those muscles. And when you're done on one side, switch to the other to keep them both in balance. But after doing this, do that self-test again with the hips right here, and I hope that balances it off, gets rid of that high hip, and just gets rid of it for good. If the exercise has helped, please support the channel by giving this video a like and maybe subscribing too. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks so much for watching.